Hello everybody, Dave from Miri Arachnids back again. Um, going to try and do a, hopefully, condensed version in layman's terms about the Brachypelma Smithy Brachypelma Hamori revision change that was done last February by Jorge Mendoza. Um, the problem that we've had is a lot of people in the in the hobby don't understand taxonomy. I don't. I don't understand it all. I'm starting to understand a lot more than I used to, but it's not very easy to understand if you've never been, you know, educated in it. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is explain to you a handful of things. Now, first of all, there are a few things that you can look for, and there's a few things that I don't want you to look for when you're, actually, there's only really one big thing. Um, the other one, I'm not 100% positive on what exactly I'm looking for, but I think, okay, we're going to start with, what not to, to describe the species as. So if you have this tarantula and I take a picture of it and I put it on a Facebook group and I say, look at my beautiful Brachypelma smithy and someone posts uh, Brachypelma smithy are now Brachypelma homori. I'm going to tell you why that's not true in a minute. But people say, oh no, that's Brachypelma smithy because the carapace is not completely black. Okay, don't use carapace color and how much of the black or how little of the black there is to describe uh, Brachypelma uh, homori, Brachypelma smithy, Brachypelma, you know, junior synonym, which is Anitha um, of Brachypelma smithy, uh, Brachypelma baimi, Brachypelma baumgarteni. There's a whole bunch of them out there that we should not be using carapace color because as they grow in age, that color can change. It can deepen, it can lighten um, after each mold. Uh, especially at, through the juvenile stage, that next molt, he may be all black on, on the carapace there. But anyway, um, I don't understand the whole parts about the spermathicae. There was not pictures for me to to look at to see if there's a difference between spermathicae from Brachypelma smithy to Brachypelma homori and the male apophysis, which would be the tibial hook uh, and emboli. And I didn't understand the description of that stuff because it just said one was greater than the other and, and you know, one was lesser than the other and the other part of it. So I, I didn't, I don't want to get into all that because I don't, I don't fully understand all that. What I do understand is that on the patella, again, of a Brachypelma hamori, you have the white sete hair that's all the way around the patella. And then it goes down, you know, each leg's got, or each part of the leg here's got that white you can see it really more prevalent here on the back leg. Um, see all the white sete hair on the Brachypelma homori. On the Anitha, or it's not Anitha, it's Smithy, Brachypelma Smithy. I want to keep saying Anitha because that's a junior synonym, but it's Smithy. So it's Brachypelma Smithy and Brachypelma homori. On the Smithy, this white hair on the patella is not there. It's just that white red um, knee. And then you'll get, pick up the white hair on this part, section of the leg. Uh, you have your foot is your tarsus. Your next section up is your metatarsus, which would be kind of like the top of your foot. And then this is the tibia. Tibia. That's it. The tibia. And then you have patella. And then you have the femur. Um, so, basically, looking at them, it's really, really difficult to tell. And again, I'm not I'm not telling you that, you know, let's go, let's start yanking out all your spiders, start changing names, anything like that. But this is what I was told. Look for the white hair on the patella. That is indica indicative of Brachypelma homori. Now, what I want to explain to you is how we have screwed up as hobbyists and as people that present information, whether it's myself or you know, Tom Moran or Deadly Tarantula Girl or Tarantula Cow, whoever it is that's presenting information. Most often than not, again, we are none of us are taxonomists, none of us are biologists, none of us are arachnologists. Um, some of us try to decipher what has been said and what has been written. And I think we made a major mistake. And that major mistake is that we are, and everybody now is going out there saying Brachypelma smithy is now Brachypelma homori, and that's not true. It's not true at all, okay? It, it, it's the way that they were sold, and I'm going to show you, a, again, a quick caveman rendition of what I mean in layman's terms. So I'm going to pause you here. I'm going to set up this little uh, 
again, caveman presentation because I don't do PowerPoint and, and all that other stuff. I, I don't have, I don't even know how to use PowerPoint. So if I did, I probably would be better off doing it that way, but I'm going to do it this way and hopefully you guys can understand what I mean. Okay. So first thing that we need to do is go back in time to 1897, 1897, Picard and Cambridge, they describe this species as a discovery back in, again, 1897 in Mexico, which was named the Brachypelma smithi or smithy. So they looked similar. Okay. Uh, let, let's, let's go back. Let's forget about what I just said to look similar. They found tarantulas over here, tarantulas over here. And this is the Balsas River which is a natural, nat natural geographical border or division between these guys here and this guy here. Okay. So what happened is they described this tarantula and this tarantula was kind of just lumped into it because it looked pretty much the same. So it stayed that way for almost a hundred years, actually a hundred years. Exactly. Because in 1997, Tesmont, Clayton, and Verdez, or Verdez, described this species as Brachypelma homori. Okay, so now if you look at this again, rudimentary caveman map that I have here Brachypelma smithy, Brachypelma anitha, Brachypelma homori. So for the last 20 years, that's what they've been. Brachypelma anitha, Brachypelma smithy, and Brachypelma homori. In 2017, after I don't know how many years of field study, DNA barcoding, um, whatever else that was involved in Jorge Mendoza's work, he finally got his paper uh, accepted and published on the description between the two. The only real change that was done on, in those is that the Brachypelma anitha is now a junior synonym of Brachypelma smithy. Okay, so we're just calling them all Brachypelma smithy now. So when people post on Facebook and say, oh, you know, I have Brachypelma anitha. People are like, no, no, you don't have Brachypelma anitha. You have Brachypelma smithy. Uh, it's actually partially right because the anitha was not dropped. It was just a junior synonym. So it was listed under smithy as another descriptor or another uh, name for Brachypelma smithy. That's not saying that you should use it because Brachypelma smithy is actually the senior synonym. And that's the name that you should be using. The big part of it was that this guy here was described. Okay, this guy here was said, okay, I have Brachypelma homori. And these are the changes. This Not changes, because there weren't changes. He has been a Brachypelma homori since 1997. That's not changed. Okay, so we're going to go back in time again to, let's say, the 70s. Okay, back what, in, in the 60s, the tarantula movie came out, you know, the big, big, big spider and... and I'm not even really sure because I haven't really seen any of those movies. But anyway, the, the hobby started to to pick up. And the the driving factor of that was the Brachypelma smithy. Okay? Now, again, remember, we're back in the 70s and 80s now. This guy's still known as Brachypelma smithy. That hasn't been changed. So people went out. And they need to make a quick buck. So what do they do? Hey, you know what? I can go out and collect these spiders, put them in a box, and ship them to Europe or ship them to the United States and sell them, and I can make some money to live off of. So that's what they did. So in the hobby, they were sold as Brachypelma smithy because at that point in time, that was what they were known as. Okay? And as time went on, of course, you got to the point where sites got involved and said, you know what, these, these tarantulas are becoming uh, endangered. We're not going to let you export them or collect them and sell them anymore. So I, I want to say, again, and this don't take this part as fact, but I think that all that happened right around the same time that this guy was actually described as Brachypelma homori. Okay. And again, natural border between the two of them, the Balsas River. 
So in the hobby for the last 30 years, 40 years, we've had Brachypelma smithy. Every red knee tarantula that's got the black and red stripes and, you know, the, the, the classic look of a Brachypelma smithy has been a Brachypelma smithy. It's been sold as a Brachypelma smithy. They've been bred as a Brachypelma smithy, and that's what they've been. Okay, so now, in 2017, the paperwork's been done, finalized, accepted, that the revisions that were done with the three species, Brachypelma anitha, Brachypelma smithy, and Brachypelma homori, were, were done with DNA barcoding and separated. Okay, again, Brachypelma anitha is now Brachypelma smithy. This guy's still Brachypelma homori. This guy's still Brachypelma smithy. What we've screwed up in the last year, and again, th this is this is people on YouTube, this is people on Arachta boards, this is people on the Facebook groups, these are people that are selling them and breeding them uh, at the expos uh, all across the world, really. We've screwed up one simple thing. We keep saying over and over and over again that Brachypelma smithy is now Brachypelma homori. And that's not true. It's the farthest from the truth that you can actually get. Because Brachypelma smithy was never changed. Brachypelma homori was never changed. It was just put into publication. Now, what's changed is what they're sold as. Okay? So this guy here, who's actually a Brachypelma smithy, and... Well, I'm going to use myself as an example because I don't want to. I don't want to call anybody out here, but I'm going to say that I'm I'm a breeder, and I've been breeding these for the last few years, you know, and I've got a couple nice egg sacs, and I never really looked into the differences between them, even after the paperwork was done, because people kept telling me, you know what, Brachypelma smithy is now Brachypelma homori, so everything that I'm now selling, I'm selling is Brachypelma homori, and that's no different than everything that was being sold prior to. This we're we're sold as Brachypelma smithy and not Brachypelma homori. But anyway, so I'm breeding this spider right here. This guy, I, I bred him these these pair. I bred this pair, got a nice egg sac out of them, and it happened in December of 2016. Okay, so we're getting into that part where I could start now selling them in February, March of 2017, and then, oh my goodness. There was a revision done. And the revision, people are telling me that Brachypelma smithy, or what we knew as Brachypelma smithy, is now Brachypelma homori. So now I've taken these guys over here, and now I'm selling them all as Brachypelma homori. And that's not right. Okay? This guy here, no matter what is done, no matter what we've said, no matter what we've sold as, is still Brachypelma smithy. I can't move him over here and make him a homori. He's over here as a Brachypelma smithy. I can't take this guy over here and make him a Brachypelma smithy. Now, what's happened is, okay, now I have these three spiders. Do I have another black rock, maybe? Yeah, I do. Okay, now I have these three spiders back in 2015, 2016, and they've been Brachypelma smithy. You know, the whole time. I'm trying to breed them, trying to breed them. Nothing's happening. Uh, I'm not breeding them, not breeding them. Nothing, nothing's going on. This guy's been a Brachypelma homori sitting over here as a Brachypelma smithy. In the hobby. Not actually in the, you know, taxonomy and arachnology of, of spiders. This has really actually been a Brachypelma homori. But we've been selling them and keeping them as Brachypelma smithy since the 70s. So that's the way it's been. And I know people don't want to accept this. And haven't accepted this since the beginning. But what I found out now in 2017 is that, oh, well, you know what? Everything that's been Brachypelma smithy is now Brachypelma homori, so now I moved them all over here. And that's still not right, right? So let's bring them back over here as uh, late 2016. I'm looking at these and I'm saying, hey, you know what? Or we'll say, no, I don't want to say late 2016. We'll say that I understood the paper back in 2017 when it came out. And I talked to people that gave me some ideas of which is which and I say okay well this this one I had was an Anitha but it's actually now a Smithy but this guy here is a little bit different so I, I understand that oh you know the patella hairs are white these ones aren't neither are these ones okay 
So what needs what needed to happen is that this guy needs to come out of the Brachypelma smithy and move over here to the Brachypelma homori. And that's where everyone is making that correlation and screwing it up. That guy was always a Brachypelma homori, just sold as a Brachypelma smithy. I can't now change, just because Jorge Mendoza did a paper, I can't now change this guy as a smithy and make him a homori. I can't do that. That's like saying, that's like saying this. Well, this is a P Metallica, and this is a P Metallica, and this is a P Metallica, but, you know, this one's black. So it's got to be a different species, so I'm just going to throw it over here as a P Metallica, whatever. You, you, you just can't do that, okay? And we misunderstood the, def the, the defining factor of this paper. It wasn't to separate the species as far as in the hobby. It wasn't to, to, to settle that because they don't care about the hobby. What they care about is the preservation of the species, okay? So we want to keep Homori as Homori. We want to keep Smithy as Smithy. And now Anitha as a junior synonym as Smithy. We want to keep it that way. So, it, you know, again, put this river back in front, in between them. They're, they're not going to cross this river to get to the other side. They have no reason to. They're perfectly content living here. So these guys aren't going to go over here and start breeding with these guys. It's not going to happen. Can they be done in in, in the hobby? I, I honestly don't know. Okay, because I I know that you know spermathicae and and boli and males and females are like a lock and key. It's got to fit. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't work. So this natural barrier in the wild is what keeps these separated. So the paperwork was basically to done to preserve the species, and we're going to say that. We'll just say that there's 500,000 of these in the wild and there's 10 million of these in the wild. We don't want people coming over here and, and trying to smuggle these out and sell them as these. Okay, so that's basically what my understanding of what the whole driving factor of that paper was, was, was that simple little thing. So just to reiterate one more time, we've had Brachypalma Smithy in the hobby for 40 years. Okay. This guy has always been known as a Brachypelma smithy because that's what it was sold as in the hobby. It was labeled wrong. Uh, and again, it wouldn't have been labeled right until 1997, but by then, no one really paid attention. And people have been breeding them over and over and over again since then. So we're not importing them anymore. We're using captive bred as basically a stock of the hobby. But this guy is not a smithy. It's a homori. So that paperwork made sure that this guy is standalone. And that's, that's who he is. I say, oh, well, you know what? Brachypelma smithy is now Brachypelma homori, so I'm just going to move him over here, and you can't do that. So this is what needs to change in everybody's thinking, is that Brachypelma smithy is not now Brachypelma homori. Okay, Brachypelma smithy is still Brachypelma smithy. Brachypelma homori is Brachypelma homori. It's just what they were sold as. So all these years of being sold as a Brachypelma smithy is now should be sold as a Brachypelma homori. And the problem's going to be is that people that breed them and people that, that import them and, and throw them on their shelves and, and ship them off in the field as slings, you're not going to even know what you have as far as Brachypelma homori or Brachypelma smithy. If you have good breeders that know the differences between the two and are breeding them the right way, that should be the telltale, okay? And I don't know how long this is going to take to fix. I really don't. This is, this is going to be a, a long struggle, a long battle, and you're going to see this consistently over and over and over again on the groups because, you know, not everybody watches the videos, not everybody's going to read the things that have been said, um, and it was discussed today on one of the tarantula groups, and this is why I did this video, because now I understand exactly what was done and what we've been saying wrong for the last year. So, again, if you have any questions about this, um, you know, by all means, please leave a comment down below. Um, I, I hope I explained this as easy as possible in layman's terms so that everybody can understand it. Um, I didn't script it. I just started talking and I hope that, I mean, I know I repeated things a handful of times, but I hope that I got the, the point across again. Um, Brachypelma smithy is not Brachypelma homori now. Okay. Brachypelma smithy is still Brachypelma smithy. Brachypelma homori is still Brachypelma homori. All right, have a great day, and I'm sure that the comment section down below is going to get filled up, so I'll try to do a better job of keeping up with it, and talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.